forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. of the apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exultation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. His love is everlasting. I was hard pressed and was falling. strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that is perishable, even though tested by fire, may prove to be for the praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him. You rejoice with indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst, and he said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, who sends you forgive or forgiven them, and who sends you retain are retained. Thomas called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, <clears throat> Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and bring your hand, and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There's a line in an old spiritual song that says, Glory, glory, hallelujah. Ain't gonna have no pain or sorrow when I lay my burden down. The song ultimately refers to heaven. However, to that day, when we see our Lord face to face, we, will, we, we all carry pain and sorrow by many burdens, and we all long to be set free. How wonderful it would be if there was a time and a way to just lay our burdens down. Well, today is that time. This is that day. Through the love and generosity of our Lord, through the peace of divine mercy, on this day, we are given the opportunity to obtain a complete pardon of our sins. And this pardon not only erases our sins, but forgives any retribution needed to satisfy God's justice. And we don't have to scale a mountain or walk on hot coals to obtain it. We only have to have the wisdom and faith to recognize the gift that we are being offered. Theologians have said that the pardon of divine mercy is like a second baptism. But as important and wondrous as this pardon is, the message of divine mercy is so much more. Yes, through Christ's mercy, we can lay our burdens down, free of guilt and remorse. But more importantly, through Christ's love and our gratitude, we are set free to become more fervent and effective apostles. Why is this freedom important? It's important because we cannot be fully fervent apostles if we are weighed down by guilt. We cannot be fully effective missionaries of mercy if we are burdened with remorse. To be truly effective apostles, we must be joyful examples and contagious witnesses of God's mercy as authentic apostles slavery. And who are these apostles? If your sins have been forgiven, if you are grateful for God's incredible gift of mercy, then you are that apostle. 
Our Lord has called you to lift the burdens of your neighbor. He has called you to take the message of his mercy to the whole world. But are you willing? If not, then ask yourself, is anything more needed in our families, the morality of our society, than inner conversion, true transformation in Christ, touched and sustained by mercy, forgiveness, pardon, and gratitude? As apostles of divine mercy, Jesus has given us all the graces we need to be effective instruments of, his, of conversion, to reform our world, and to set those imprisoned in sin free in his love. Jesus told St. Faustina, paint an image according to the pattern you see with the signature, Jesus, I trust in you. Our St. Faustina was certainly not the first to witness the power of conversion brought about through the image of divine mercy. In his passion, Jesus was crucified with two thieves, one on his right and one on his left. Crucifixion may seem like an extreme sentence for their crimes, but these were not ordinary thieves. They were part of a family of thieves that robbed and murdered travelers as they journeyed in remote and desolate areas. Gestus, the thief on Jesus' left, perhaps hoping to win favor and pardon with his executioners, joined in reviling Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. However, Dismas, the thief on Jesus' right, rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God? Dismas went on to confess his sins, express his sorrow, and affirm the justice of he was receiving was affirmed the justice of his punishment. Then he defended Jesus the innocent, saying, This man has done nothing wrong. And turning to Jesus, he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom, thus acknowledging Jesus' divinity. And in reply, Jesus said to him, Today you will be with me in paradise. Shortly afterward, the Roman soldiers came to break their legs, but on seeing that Jesus was already dead, one of the soldiers, Longinus, thrust the spear into Jesus' side, and immediately blood and water poured out. This was likely witnessed by Dismas as he was dying. Dismas and Longinus were among the first to see and experience the power of the image of divine mercy. They saw it as it was being painted, painted not with a brush, but with a spear. And through the power of what they saw, through the power of the blood and water that radiated mercy on the whole world, they both experienced a profound conversion. Dismas went to, with the Lord to be in paradise. Longinus became a prominent member of the church, bringing many souls to Christ. At the crucifixion, it was Longinus who explained, exclaimed, Truly, this man was the Son of God. Today both are saints, venerated by the church. Jesus' last act on the cross was to forgive sinners and save souls. He looked at distance and said, Today you will be with me in paradise. That act of mercy shown to Dismas is enshrined in history. Whenever we see a crucifix, we see Jesus' head turn to the right, give his blessing and absolution to Dismas, the penitent thief who became a saint. The Feast of Dismas is celebrated on March 25th, the same day as the Feast of the Annunciation. The Feast of St. Longinus is March 15th. Longinus was beheaded and became a martyr in 45 AD. Of the multitude of graces made available to us in the message of divine mercy, the promise and power of conversion is truly remarkable, as seen in these three excerpts from St. Faustina's diary. Jesus said to St. Faustina, The loss of each soul plunges me into mortal sadness. You always console me when you pray for sinners. The prayer most pleasing to me is the prayer for conversion of sinners. Know, my daughter, 
that this prayer is always heard and answered. Call upon my mercy on behalf of sinners. I desire their salvation. Will you say this prayer with contrite heart and faith on behalf of some sinner? I will grant him the grace of conversion. This is the prayer, O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fountain of mercy for us. I trust in you. And last, I promise the soul that will venerate this image of divine mercy will not perish. I myself will defend it with my own glory. Is this not the essence, the miracle of the divine mercy message? That we experience a pardon for our own sins so that we can joyfully bring the mercy of Christ to the whole world. Who was most more graced by the image of divine mercy than St. Dismas and Lodgings? Seeing the crucified Christ and the blood and water that came from his side completely changed their hearts and their lives. And it was a fulfillment of the promise that Jesus would later reveal to St. Faustina. So given these words of Jesus, these few excerpts from Faustina's diary, let us prepare to pray. And as we do, please call to mind some soul in need of conversion and immerse that soul in this prayer to God's infinite mercy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. let us pray for these souls. Lord, the flames of love so burned in your precious heart that they poured forth upon the thief who was crucified with you, and you snatched him from hell. You touched his heart, and turning to him he said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fountain of mercy for us. I trust in you. Amen. Baruch Hashem. Stand. Together we claim, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. Consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became a man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again in glory to judge the living and dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I may look forward to the resurrection of death and the life of the world to come. Amen. We have not seen but still believe. With confident faith, we bring our prayer and petitions to our good and gracious God. That on this Divine Mercy Sunday, the Church will rededicate herself to living and proclaiming Christ's mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace of heart, 
and peace of mind to all those around the world who are anxious and fearful, for good health for all healthcare workers, and that our efforts to combat the coronavirus will be successful. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For those who doubt, for those who have lost their faith, for those who have not yet found faith in God, we pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For the grace this week to face the trials and difficulties of life with the confidence and certainty that come from Christ's victory over death, we pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. That the men and women of our armed forces, their families, and all who keep us safe will be kept safe from harm. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For all our priests, deacons, sisters, and brothers, whom God has sent in the name of Jesus to serve the people of Phoenix, that they will be blessed with continual, continued faithfulness to him, and inspire many more to consider a vocation to consecrated life and ordained ministry. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For all the deceased, especially Charlotte Crowley, Sue Christensen, Patricia Fogel, the wife, the sister of Jim Fogel, those names listed in our book of petitions, and for those who have died as a result of the coronavirus, that they may be with their Savior in paradise, we pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, the resurrection of your Son gives us a new birth to a living hope. Let us live the hope always through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Come campaign prayer. Almighty God, all, all gifts come from you. Direct our plans for the future and guide the work we do now so that all we do may give you honor and glory. We humbly ask for your blessing upon our capital campaign and grant us your success so we might serve you better. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Christ our Lord. Amen. 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more gave me thanks and said a blessing, and gave the chalice to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. We should pour it out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you've given us, this pure faith, this holy faith, this spotless faith, the holy blood of eternal life and the child's of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with serene and kindly countenance and accept them as ones who are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel and Joseph, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father of faith, the offering of high priest Melchizedek, the holy sacrifice of spotless victim. Humble prayer, we ask you, my dear Lord, command these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel, altar and high in the sight of your divine majesty. So all of us in this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, be filled with the grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us the sign of faith and rest and the sleep of peace. Grant the Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. For us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope you abundant their mercies. Grace you grant some share in fellowship with the holy apostles, the John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. And this we beseech you into the company, not weighing our merits, but grant us your pardon through Christ our Lord, to whom continue to make all these good things, O Lord. We sanctify them, vilify, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Take away the sins of the 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. The last was called the Supper of the Lamb. The Lord, Lord I am not worthy that she shall be from under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For spiritual communion. Thank you, Mike, for reminding me. I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and not myself, holy to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts, 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. For that to our coronavirus schedule. So this past Monday Friday, the entire staff is on. We're all on vacation. We're all, that's why everything was closed. We're all, it just makes sense everybody take time off together. So we're all gone. So um, church is open tomorrow morning, 7.30, 11.30. Um, we're live streaming, as you know, you're watching that at 4.30, Saturday evening mass, live streaming, the mass in Spanish at noon. Um, and then the church is open for private prayer, Monday to Thursday, uh, 9 a.m. to 4 o'clock, Friday, 9 to 12, Saturdays, 10 to 4, four and Sundays, back to Sundays, 7.30, 11.30. Okay. Um, we're live streaming our daily mass, Tuesday through Friday, 8 o'clock. Confession schedule remains the same as it was before of the pandemic, but I'm your confession by the side door of the hall next to the dumpster. Okay? That's the easier way to find the door. I didn't say by the dumpster, but that's the easier way to say where to find the door. Okay? Um, our prayer and time of national emergency. Holy Virgin of Guadalupe, Queen of the Angels and Mother of Americas, we fly to you today as your loving children. We ask you to intercede for us with your Son, as you did at the wedding in Canaan. Pray for us, loving Mother, and gain for our nation and world, and for all of our enemies and loved ones, the protection of your holy angels, that we may be spared the worst of this illness. For those already afflicted, we ask you to obtain the grace of healing and deliverance. Hear the cries of those who are vulnerable and fearful. Wipe away their tears and help them to trust. In this time of trial and testing, teach all of us in the church to love one another and to be patient and kind. Help us to bring the peace of Jesus to our land and to our hearts. We come to you with confidence, knowing that you truly are our compassionate mother Help with the sick and the cause of our joy. Shelter us under the mantle of your protection. Keep us in the embrace of your arms. Help us always to know the love of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Pray St. Michael. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Now down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of the only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he who by, re, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you have already risen with Christ in baptism into faith by living in the right manner on this earth, united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Come down upon you, remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. I believe I overcome 